everyone. Welcome to the Living Room channel. Today, I have a special guest with me called uh, Berta, all the way from Indonesia. Hi, Berta. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Vaughn, for having me. Hi, everyone. Yes. Berta, would you like to introduce um, yourself to the viewers? Surely. Uh, definitely, like, my name is Berta, and I right now reside in Jakarta. But before the pandemic, I travel a lot, uh, both for work and pleasure. Uh, but since like the pandemic, I have to, of course, like a limited travel and things like that. So I have to manage everything like remotely. Uh, if I have to, uh, you know, like the, do finish like a task or stuff uh, overseas. And um, right now I'm running a few projects at this moment. Uh, telecommunication um, is more like a focusing on constructing and IT uh, projects and also fintech project at this moment. You, I mean, how has this, uh, besides of course putting a halt in all our traveling plans, right? How has this um, pandemic, this COVID situation changed um, the, the business, your business model? Uh, well, honestly, uh, of course, it's changed a lot uh, since like we have like very limited access and then like uh, do stuff basically uh, more often like for my telecommunication business that we have to postpone or uh, but thankfully like the clients of course understand about all the situation uh, since we have to lay down like a fiber optic cable and uh, I think it's been about like uh, two months that the, the government uh, stated that it's uh, like a semi, like we, we did not call like lockdown. So we kind of like um, trying not to do like lots of activity outside. So that's impact, of course, uh, my team to finish the, the task. Uh, but like, th thankfully, like right now we start to continue the project, though it's a little bit like a, a slow, but uh, we ensure that we will finish the project uh, soon. That's part of the telecommunication business. Uh, mm -hmm. But in IT business, uh, again, like, thank God that it ran, it, it still like run smoothly because like the team itself can do remotely. So... Uh, as long as we deliver the the project on time, uh, since our client actually in in Japan, so uh, we just like do whatever like you know like a basically like a normal schedule, uh, and everything doing by remotely, and that's part of the IT. Business. Overall, we we're still like uh, doing okay. Thankfully, yeah. That's great. That's good to know. And and has that changed? I, I think in terms of priorities wise, right? Like what, what is most important to you right now as compared to like maybe um, a year ago or even like two years ago? Yeah, yeah uh, I agree with you actually. Like I also see that uh, many people, include myself, used to take it for granted, like just a simple stuff. Like right now, we, we fail you that more. And of course, uh, since it's always like my family is always uh, fail you more like in terms of uh, taking care of uh, my, my personal, like, you know, health, more concern about it. And then like more, uh, you know, like a uh, thing, what, what's uh, the best, like uh, what's my priority at this moment? Like, you know, try to uh, strive more because like during the, the normal days uh, before, we just like try to get busy and then like you, we, we forgot some stuff that sometimes like it's important, but now we have like uh, more extra time to realize and then like uh, to, to think a uh, step because knowing after the pandemic, I believe like everything changed. Like um, I found that we cannot just like, you know, do stuff in an old strategy to focusing on digitalization, like for example, so that, that we have to be flexible to change our um, basically like uh, activity or like a strategy to be more flexible in the change itself so yeah it's it's it gives 
benefit. I'm, I'm not saying the pandemic is good, but I'm trying to, to always try my best to see the good things in every single situation. So, yeah. That's really good. I think it's a very positive attitude to have because um, if we keep being discouraged or, you know, um, if we feel like, I think during this time, a lot of businesses do fail as well. And people could have just like um, started up something, like even for myself, I was in the midst of starting up something, have to put all the plans on hold. But I think it's it's more important to not like um, have a defeat spirit. Like, you know, you want right. to you can, um, you know, turn things around, do something different instead. Mm-hmm. And, and I really like that. Right, in building up your yourself and building up your own business, I, I'm sure you would have encountered um, a lot of difficult and, di- and different situations that would have prepared you for this because I don't think this caught you by surprise. You would have, along your journey, I'm sure you have faced many different challenges. Um, so do you want to share with us like one threat that you faced um, and, and how do you overcome that? Okay. I found it actually, um, if you say like a threat, I may say that like a challenge for me. Uh, so the current success is sometimes like make me uh, being in the comfortable uh, zone or like a situation that at the end of the day, uh, we will quote unquote like left behind with all the technology or the um, idea that probably like our competitor has it like uh, at that moment so the current success i may say that one of the things that track me personally and then for me uh, uh that's kind of like all around for me so i try to be uh you know uh back on track and then like be flexible in change like for example again after the pandemic everybody like uh, tried to go towards the, the technology my system and things like that so i have to be able to follow through basically and then think more creative about like what what to do next what project or whatever that we already built like uh to be to be uh able to like um uh public to receive it like you know uh, that that's just like things that I remind myself to keep uh, moving forward basically and keep learning from uh, successful people and like a, or like a success business and even sometimes like I learn from my own team because uh, like for example my most of my team actually like they're like a millennials so uh, though they're young but I might say that uh, they're, 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 they're quite creative to be honest and sometimes like I um, like really happy if we just like uh, sit down like together just like to chit chat and sometimes like they share about the idea and then what, what actually uh, probably will work uh, for the next uh, step because they understand what is the situation right now like more like or uh, adapt more probably mm-hmm. than, than uh, those uh, like you know my age feel that it's, it's good enough because car success sometimes make you feel that you want to do anything else and that's the scary part about about uh, how to become like a success yeah it's, it's really good that you're sharing that you're working with millennials I think the way we do business has changed so much I mean um, you know mm-hmm. we used to we used to limit ourselves in social uh, media platforms, but now um, it's gone to a stage where people are using even TikTok, um, you know. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all about not only how creative you are, it's also about, mm-hmm. um, you know, your influencing techniques, you know. It's actually, people tend to follow them, um, follow a certain business or a certain um, leader if they feel like, you know, they have influence, they have um, this, um, you know, there's this weight about them. So it's, it's seen on their social media platform. So it's really a useful tool. And I think millennials are the best, um, you know, when we get them, like, you know, it's a, there was a diverse um, team that you're working with. And, mm-hmm. and how, how has that, um, I mean, like, how has that shaped you in terms of your beliefs and all that? Um, the reason why I ask is I've met many business uh, women and a lot of them are very, um, they're not, 
they are not prone to change. They don't want to change their way of doing it. They're so fixated in their traditional um, way of doing this that they feel like, no, this is not going to work. This is not how we do business. So for yourself, when you get your ideas from the millennials, right, how have um, how has your uh, perception changed? That's actually an interesting question because mm-hmm. I found that, of course, it's quite challenging uh, at, at the same time that working with millennials because I sometimes like uh, found their unique attitude or like, you know, uh, like towards me sometimes. But um, I think because I understand that most of female, they're reluctant to change or to be a little bit like a flexible because based on my experience that I've been working with male dominated industry, uh, like for telecommunication, of course, like uh, an IT and uh, uh, also like a FinTech, most of them like still dominated by male, Mm -hmm. which is um, sometimes I feel that it shaped me to become like a, of course, like a tougher, uh, but at the same time, like uh, learn me how to be like a patient uh, at the same time, because I know I still need to learn, of course, uh, from them at the end of the day, but that doesn't mean that they, they like male, uh, you know, everything at, at, the, at, at the same time. So what I'm trying to do, just try to uh, like open my heart and then try to receive uh, like a good points probably if they, they want to share, to mix it with uh, what I believe myself and then like what they think uh, what is may work because sometimes like as, as everyone knows, a male is more like a strategic thinking uh, and then we as a female more using like our um, like a feelings and because like we're female, right? So it's really nice, like a good combination if we can mix it all together because at the end of the day, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, maybe like everyone understand that if we do whatever we do with patient, that means like we love what we're doing. That means like that's using our heart, but we cannot uh, leave behind that at the same time, like we have to strategize our business plan, right? So uh, it, it, I mean like uh, my experience, I try my best to combine everything. So, so to make it like makes more sense mm-hmm. in, in what will work in the next future but of course uh as a female i can be more flexible about the changes so so that's basically what i experience uh by trying my best just to combine it with the feelings and uh, the mind which is male dominated uh really good at, at that area and I love that you, you talked about that differently, right? For males, usually it's like they like to get things done. They are very task oriented. But I think for women, we are always, we, we don't, we see the big picture, but we are very um, strategic about the way we do our things. You know, we take into mm-hmm. account like what, if we do this decision, how is this going to affect not only us? How is mm-hmm. it going to affect the, the business? How is it going to affect mm-hmm. the um, the stakeholders we are working in? So we, we do think about all of that before we make a decision. It's because of maybe mm-hmm. how we are kind of wired, I think. So do you feel that it's a challenge for, um, especially for female and entrepreneurs when they are coming into the industry? Um, is this a challenge for them? Uh, yes, actually, uh, that's also what I found like uh, in a lot of situation yeah. that I used to work with my uh, late date, uh, like my dad actually, because uh, the telecommunication industry is, is uh, the company that he built. So there's a lot of um, uh, dispute and then like, uh, lots of conversation discussion like we think like more into like detail stuff that uh, again I agree with you that uh, what's the consequences if we take this step and then what's the risk if we take this uh, decision and things like that while um, like my late dad like he's as a male like he's more like things okay this is things have needs to be done 
mm-hmm. with the, the consequences and um, uh, other things beside uh, the issue itself. Maybe not saying like uh, he's not concerned about it, but maybe he's just, as again, I mean, he's more just focusing on the, the issue itself. So yeah, it is quite challenging. But then again, uh, I try to put myself in, uh, in a position that as a leader, of course, we also have to make a quick decision. We can't think through every single thing and then it takes like forever to make a decision because otherwise it's too late anyway. So uh, just try to uh, put all the things like the risk and then the, the consequences that will happen if we take certain decision but at the same time like we also have to decide it as soon as possible or as quick as possible because yeah i mean it helps the business to to run and grow thinking about like for women coming on on a board on a board meeting for example sometimes right even though we have the job title even though we have the experience if it's a really male dominated meeting um, sometimes our views can be overlooked. There are times I've, I've seen this personally where, you know, um, the women don't even get a chance to say something like, you know, whatever she says, right, the views is like totally like overlooked and then they just go around the meeting. They just continue the meeting like, you know, that like you don't exist. Um, and I think that's, um, that's really hard for, especially if you are just, uh, just starting out in a business, a very, like very fresh, very fresh out of school, maybe. So mm-hmm. how do you feel as a woman, right? I mean, if in terms of, it's even worse if the person itself is not a very assertive character. Like sometimes some of yeah. them are soft-spoken and, and then they don't really yeah. have kind of confidence to voice out their opinion. So what are some practical tips that you think that this woman can, um, you know, can just mentally prepare for? So when they go into a meeting like that, they know they can be heard. I experienced that before, honestly, uh, more often in my telecommunication industry and in the IT industry because they think like they know everything, right? And then like we don't have a right to say anything because they think we have no clue and no idea what we, 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 we're doing. Um, that's okay. Uh, I, for, for me, uh, like a first step, just try to absorb or, or adapt whatever that we think, because in my position, I, uh, again, I mean, like, I like, I like to learn from a lot of people. So just try to listen to whatever, like, they're, they're saying and just be confident. But most of, most of all, um, maybe just a quick um, uh, idea, just, just try to be yourself, basically, because you can't change, like, as you mentioned, if you're not assertive enough, you can't just like change people to be like assertive in one or two days, right? So that, that's okay. I mean, it takes time. But uh, what I learned from the whole uh, process of my career, uh, quiet doesn't mean that you don't understand. Quiet doesn't mean that you can do your task. Just try to, to learn whatever and try to deliver uh, above the expectation every single time that you can deliver or like every single time that you got a chance to do some stuff, try to deliver extra miles, if I may say. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then of, of course, like keep learning. So uh, at the end of the day, everyone will, will understand or everyone will see that you, you have the capability of doing whatever like you're doing. And it's, uh, automatically like spoken itself without you have to keep like you know raise your your um voice or like you you're trying to be uh heard or something like that just try to uh deliver like the best that you can just be yourself be confident and be committed that's the most important thing because you can't just try to do the best in one task and then like you uh, give up in another task because this is like a tough world anyway at the end of the day and then uh, for those of you that um, in the male industry business or uh, for those of the women that must uh, or have no choice by by dealing with a lot of males in their their business or like their their activities uh, I encourage them. Uh, it's totally fine. Just keep doing the best that you can. 
So at the end of the day, they will see. Because as we know, sometimes like male, uh, well, in my, in my experience, not saying that maybe they're not, that they they they're pride enough to say that okay you did a great job um i mean like sometimes even though like we we try to do like extra miles or or uh, deliver like extra sometimes they just like appreciate us as like okay you do just a normal job but keep believing in yourself that this is like the best that you can deliver every single time the task uh be given to you so yeah i think that's that's uh based on my experience it's really great. I like what you shared about being uh, authentic to yourself, um, like a, a mentor last time, a leader. And she's been like years in the industry. But the, the thing about her is she is very, very soft-spoken. She's very gentle. And she's got so much of influence about her. And I think it's really because of how authentic she is. She never tries to be someone that's different. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, um, that's one of the things that we are taught as a, like a woman entrepreneur. We are taught to be, no, you need to, you need to be um, more vocal. You need to be strong. And, and sometimes that's not our personality. That's not our mm -hmm. character. So when we do that, it doesn't come out like, natural it comes out like kind of forced i think so I, I so that's where i'm just leading to our next question like how do you think um female entrepreneurs can leverage on not only their strengths but um how about their weakness mm -hmm. uh i i i like this question um honestly when if i can share my experience like before i uh, into like this career situation Yes. Uh, I kind of like a person that probably some people can say a uh, little bit like a timid and then like uh, shy, but in terms of uh, because I've, I always think that I don't have enough experience and I have no idea what I'm doing, that that's like a, like, you know, since like teenagers, of course, like sometimes like you have no idea what were you doing, right? But then like uh, all the experience shaped me to become what I am right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, those, the, the weaknesses that people may say that, oh, okay, I have weaknesses and uh, like maybe I'm so shy, maybe I'm not assertive enough, maybe I'm not able to do a lot of stuff because my limitation and things like that I suggest um, or like I want to encourage that just not to focus on your weaknesses of course like no one's perfect in this world anyway even even the best CEOs uh, he or she might have like weaknesses but they not focusing on the weaknesses uh, yes me, we have to know ourselves of course like we know what is our weaknesses but then just not try to fit on it try to fit on your strength so if you know that you have uh five strengths for example that you really understand like yourself right and then like you find out that oh, okay i have like this five strength try to um uh fit the strength like fit the skill instead of focusing on the weakness Mm -hmm. So don't worry too much about your weakness if as long as you can focusing and try to build your your strength uh, at the end of the day, those weaknesses will uh, not fade away, but like uh, the, the, the strength will cover the weakness as uh, back to you as like a unique person, as you just mentioned, as you as uh, uh, the person that uh, can, you know, can contribute because of your strength, not because of your weakness. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my, my encouragement probably. So, that's really powerful, um, Berta, because we are, I think a lot of them, I think, um, look at their weakness more, but I think it's really not focusing on your weakness, but I think really um, putting your full strength, you know, but just keeping your eyes on your strengths. What are your strengths? And I think that will downplay your weakness as you right. 
um, you know, through your experience as you go about doing your, your work, meeting more people, I think it changes us um, mm-hmm. in, in throughout our journey. And then we realize that what we think is a weakness sometimes can become a strength. Right, yes. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. How do you feel about women, right, empowering and helping other women, um, especially female entrepreneurs who might not have the right uh, resources or opportunities? Mm-hmm. Um, we can just like keep uh, supporting anyone, like uh, not thinking about then what's in it for me. Don't ever think about that first. So try to share whatever you think like you want to share or like to support to other like female friends or female um, uh, like uh, colleagues, for example, or like any other things that may need your thought or like, you know, your idea, just keep sharing stuff to, 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 to them. And at the same time, like keep learning because sometimes like if we uh, encourage other people or if we share to other people, I experience that sometimes like I get more than I share because I can learn more uh, when I share stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's encouraged me a lot. And that's also sometimes like um, helping my business to grow because we we never we never know that maybe like from from anyone we got all the ideas and then we know what is going on uh like we just like at the end it's, it's good for your your insight for your business so yeah just just keep sharing stuff to others uh without thinking um what's in it for me or what, then like what 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 did i get because at the end of the day you i believe like you will gain more uh, then you think like after like you share with others so that's that's my experience like supporting and encouraging them it's a very positive attitude i think that's the difference between uh, women entrepreneurs and male entrepreneurs because i think for male right it's always like they like to keep their connections whatever their own achievements to themselves but for women entrepreneurs we have communities we have a lot of women associations where we mm. kind of impart and um, help to mentor even the younger women out then like what you see you never know how that would can that can turn around for you maybe that could be a future collaboration that could be an exchange right. of ideas so there's um we are opening up to like so much more opportunities by um, helping one another. How do you stay motivated? Um, doing what I like to do, uh, that, that keep me motivated. And then basically the, the base of everything is I keep saying to myself that I have to chase my destiny because that's or like the purpose in my life. So that's the most important thing. And as my late father always uh, taught us about sharing to others, which is like as a nozzle. So the more uh, the oil or the water through the nozzle, the more we got more, absorb more, so we can like give more. So that, give, that, that gives me uh, motivated to do whatever I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. And then uh, just keep learning from everyone basically because you never be enough basically so yeah that's that's what uh, motivate me every day knowing my purpose of my life you you mentioned your your late father a lot i'm sure he must have been a real um, huge influence in your life you know i can see that you know you've learned so much from him and uh, you know he keeps you keep mentioning him because i think he has you know like played a huge part in uh, shaping you to be who you are, a confident mm-hmm. woman, a woman that's um, really strong, really positive. Um, so, Berta, what, what, so what is a quote that you live by? I always believe in whatever I think in my heart so then I can become. Mm-hmm. Though uh, it's step by step, but yeah, I believe in that quote so much. That's why I also probably can encourage everyone if you have a dream please dream big because you can achieve it don't worry about it sometimes like people uh i want to do this but this is like my limitation well for me it's dream is free anyway right so 
at least like keep keep dream, dream big uh just think what you think you you can become then then someday you will become that so that's the quote it's, it's really true i think a lot of times like what i, I think is so right that you brought from um, brought that out right like dreams it's it's there's no cost to it you can dream as big as you want there is no limitations to it but when you don't have a dream right you fall short but when you have a dream when you have something in hand um even if you don't achieve that you at, at least will achieve something it's so important to keep yourself like progressing keep yourself having like this dream and you know, doing it might take even 10 or 20 years but at least you have that satisfaction of achieving it Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's good to have like a purpose in life, right? Sometimes for a woman, uh, especially, correct me if I'm wrong, but I sometimes like I see a few cases that things that, oh, okay, I already got married, I have kids, so I can't do anything anymore. While for me, uh, you can still like do whatever, like, you know, we, just dream and then like try to achieve it like step by step every day uh as long as you have the purpose in life uh doing stuff here or like dream here doesn't always mean that you're sitting in the ceo position you can you know like a dream everything like a success here also it's not just uh being working in uh, like a multinational corporate for example yes. so success here I mean like that's why like you have to to shape your own dream what you want like uh in 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 your life uh what what success that you will achieve so towards that hopefully um you will get what you dream of and that's good because you are we are a lot of people like kind of um you know limit that success right they put it like if you are successful you need to be in a in a big corporate sector you need to be like mm -hmm. a managerial level a ceo level that's right. how you define success but it's different and i and i totally agree with you days back i was sharing some um a book on leadership to a mm -hmm. and and she and she told me like oh i don't need leadership anymore i'm a housewife and i told her no but you are a leader in your home you are yes. a wherever you are placed in you have influence there and you know it doesn't mean that you're a housewife mean that you don't impact anyone you impact the people around you mm -hmm. so it's really about how we see ourselves a housewife is also um, you know you, they have their own dreams and I think social media has made it so much easier for us to even like start a blog you can actually write your talk right. so many things yeah. I think you can do right now Exactly. You can become like entrepreneurship by just having your own uh, store in, start with the IG, for example, <laughs> or you can do whatever, actually, like don't limit success, just like do your, what would you think like you can do and just dream as big as possible and just keep believing on yourself. Yes. And, and I really um, like coming to the end of this section, right? really love but uh, your energy your way of sharing you know your, your thank you so much it's um i think it's really inspiring to women um entrepreneurs because um you know, in it's I, I really wanted guests who are different because i feel like sometimes uh people who have it all together who are very confident um you might appeal to some people but you might not appeal to the rest of the women out there who are generally sometimes can be a little bit more um introvert kind of uh, and, and i love that you share that about yourself like you know i was like this and now i'm actually learning through my journey um, you know it's changed me how i've i've like transformed how i'm doing so much of businesses right now and i think that you know your success hasn't stopped here and it's gonna grow more um mm -hmm. it, it keep on thank you keep on building people up i think you know you're gonna still gonna grow more some more things and there's so much from you to share do you have any key takeaways that you would like to leave with the viewers um, as we end the section? Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned before, just maybe the, the key note to take away, just try to be yourself. Don't ever try to change yourself because like you're like, you are a unique person and just focusing on uh, your strength, uh, not try to focusing much on your, your weakness. Uh, be confident 
and then be committed because you can't just uh, try to commit one day and then like give up to the other day. I know the journey of life is up and downs, but keep on going uh, as long as you know who you are, you have your identity and you have your purpose in life, mm -hmm. just dream big so you can achieve whatever like you think you can be. That's so good. That's so good. And um, and I think that's the whole purpose of what I'm sharing as well, really rediscovering your identity of who you are as a person, using your own um, unique personality traits to, to lead and influence the people around you. So, um, so in line to what I've been um, sharing as well. So as we have come to this, um, to the end of this section, just want to thank Berta for her time, for really sharing her knowledge as well and her practical um, tips to the viewers out there. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. <laughs> And I really enjoyed the section as well. So for viewers out there who are watching this, um, I do hope that you, you know, you get inspired and you dream big as well, like what uh, Berta has shared as well. Um, list down some of the dreams, even if it seems impossible on paper, at least put it down. Remember that you have a dream and you will see it fulfilled um, at one stage or at any point in your life. There will be people coming on board to help you, resources that you will be um, you know, able to find that will help you to achieve that dream. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.